For many of us, our fondest childhood memories revolve around the traditions of Christmas. It is a time that many around the world celebrate as the birth of Jesus Christ, the Savior and Messiah of mankind. In the Northern Hemisphere during late December, the days are at their shortest lengths and the nights are at their longest. For those of the pagan world, this has always been the greatest time of the year to celebrate and practice the works of darkness. The pagan calendar identifies this period as the winter solstice. It was during the pre-Christian midwinter pagan celebrations of Scandinavia's Norsemen where today's Christmas traditions began. As a means of honoring the pagan sex and fertility god Yule, a 12-day celebration during the month of December was inaugurated. A large single log considered to be a phallic idol was lit on fire and kept burning for 12 days. Animal or human sacrifices were offered in the fire on each of those days. Wild, delirious reveling accompanied the daily sacrifices as drunken participants defiantly strove to make contact with spirits. In Germany, the pagan god Odin lent his name to this midwinter holiday. Early Germans were terrified of Odin, whose nocturnal flights decided who would prosper or perish in the coming year. Later, we'd see another Christmas sky rider, Santa Claus. But for now, staying inside became the smartest choice at this frightening time of the year. Every winter, from at least the second century BC and likely many centuries before then, the ancient Romans held a major festival called the Saturnalia. During this celebration, among other things, the Romans had huge parties. They decorated their houses with greens and gave each other gifts. Saturnalia began on December 17th and lasted about a week. It was followed on December 25th by the birth date of the pagan god Mithras, a celebration known as the birth of the unconquered sun. In pre-Christian Rome, celebrants were paying homage to their own gods during the winter solstice. Witchcraft traditions hold that a number of pagan gods were given birth during this period, including Dionysus, Attis, and Baal, chief male god of fertility and licentiousness. Another pagan god from Persia, identified as Mithra, was said to have been born specifically on December 25th. Mithra was the god of the unconquerable sun, the god of the light between heaven and earth, worshipped at that time by an influential Roman cult. His birth symbolized an end to the long nights and a return to the dominance of the sun. During the month-long winter solstice celebration, courts in Rome were closed. Any and all crimes were allowed. Homosexuality, cross-dressing, and uncontrolled debauchery reigned supreme. Rome's order was turned upside down. Even children were allowed to join in the drunken orgies as part of the juvenilia celebration. By 270 AD, the Roman Emperor Aurelian had made it official, setting aside a seven-day period from December the 17th through the 24th, culminating in an exchange of gifts on December the 25th to celebrate the birth of the sun god. This Roman orgy to end all orgies later became known as Saturnalia in honor of the god Saturn, the god of excess. If pagan Rome was already celebrating the birth of Mithra on December 25th, it seemed natural to honor the birth of the Christ child at the same time. By the 4th century, the church made it official. December 25th was declared the feast day of the Nativity. It was hoped that the pagan celebrations of Saturnalia would merge into this new legally sanctioned form of Christianity. The church's practice of changing the dates of Christian events to coincide with pagan festivals continued and by the 7th century Pope Gregory I had ordered Augustine of Canterbury 
to incorporate any and all pagan practices and customs into the expanding Roman Catholic Church. During the Middle Ages, the debased Mardi Gras atmosphere of what was now known as Christ's Mass had reached a fevered pitch. Common practices included open sex in the streets, rioting, murder, and a number of pagan druidic Halloween rituals. This blood-drenched celebration got so out of hand that by 1652, following the execution of King Charles I, Christ's Mass was finally outlawed in England. A religious reform movement began sweeping the country led by Puritan Oliver Cromwell. The Puritans took the biblical mandate seriously which commanded that Christianity remain pure and separate from paganism. Despite their noble efforts, the celebration simply went underground and by 1656, after only four short years under the ban, the public's demand for the legalization of Christ's Mass had become insurmountable. The appointment of Charles II to the throne restored England's monarchy and with it the celebration of Christ's Mass. We can be sure of one thing, it wasn't in late December and uh, because in the first place shepherds don't abide by their flocks in the fields by night in late December, it's too cold. They take them out in the morning to pasture uh, uh, protect them while they eat all day and then bring them back in at night. So it wasn't in late December. <clears throat> it, it, it's an interesting thing and perhaps uh, an intellectually uh, tantalizing thought to try to figure out when he was born. And it can be done uh, within limits and uh, if it mattered, and apparently it doesn't matter to God, it probably, he was probably born in late September. Some scholars point out that according to scripture the birth of Jesus may have taken place in the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. What we do in life echoes in eternity.